This is a presentation about Sherman Alexi, uh, the author we'll be featuring next, and his short story, What You Pawn, I Will Redeem. Sherman J. Alexi Jr. was born in 1966, a member of the Spokane and the Cordillon tribes. Uh, Alexi grew up in a Spokane reservation in the Washington State area. He's a graduate of Washington State University. He's published 18 books. Uh, a short fiction collection, as well as the screenplay for the movie Smoke Signals, which was released in 1999. Alexi is an activist for Native American rights and culture. He pens an essay called Superman and Me, which describes the impact of reading on his life. It was published in the Los Angeles Times in 1998. Uh, this Superman and Me essay is available on Haiku. You also have a hard copy version of it. Well, let's learn a little bit about Alexi before we proceed. These are some interesting ideas that uh, Alexi has either written or uh, spoken. You know, we see that John Steinbeck and Stephen King were some of his early heroes, specifically because Steinbeck wrote about impoverished people, uh, perhaps in his famous novel, uh, The Grapes of Wrath, which uh, discussed some of the issues surrounding the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, and the struggle to find work at that point in time in American history. Stephen King, a hero of Alexi's because he's, uh, he kind of writes for the misfits, the nerds and the geeks uh, in Alexi's parlance, something obviously uh, Alexi can relate to, being impoverished, growing up in a difficult situation, uh, being a bit of a misfit socially, being a bit of a nerd or a geek uh, intellectually. And that brings us to Alexi's heroes, who are just decent, ordinary people often, uh, he seems to think that decency is very rare and very underrated, and that his writing is somehow about sort of exhibiting that decency common to many people, uh, regardless of background. So we're looking for the everyday hero as we uh, study Alexi in his short story, What You Pawn, I Will Redeem. Who are the everyday heroes? Who are the people that are just decent and kind, that shine in that work of literature? Finally, if you write about pain, Alexi says, you can end up searching for more pain to write about. Uh, and that's a self-destructive route, he says. Uh, he suggests we get away from that. Uh, we can write about pain and anger without having it consume us. And we, can ha we have to learn how to do that in our lives as individuals before we can do that as writers. Uh, so I do think you need quite a bit of living under your belt before you can become a writer. That's not to say you shouldn't be writing now. You should be, of course, to hone your craft. Uh, but I wouldn't expect to become a, a, great, a great, fabulous writer without experience, without a ton of reading, and without at least considering some of the things that Alexi shares in this slide. Uh, we see, who is this guy that we're going to be reading his work? Well, he learned to read at a very early age. Uh, he did experience the trials and tribulations of growing up on an American reservation. We do have to sort of remind ourselves that the indigenous people of this country uh, were pushed out or warred against. Uh, you could certainly argue that a genocide was perpetrated against them uh, as we forced them, in many cases, onto reservations out in the West. These reservations are not particularly pleasant places generally. Uh, if you watch the Canary Effect documentary, which is available and linked to on Haiku, uh, you'll see different examples of this from uh, water that is dangerous, uh, for example, polluted with uranium. Many of the reservations are close to uranium mines out in New Mexico in the West, and the water as a result is polluted, or in some cases there's no water. Uh, you know, the average American uses 100 gallons of water a day, uh, whereas uh, in one particular example I read about yesterday, uh, a family was using the same gallon of water to wash their dishes, wash their hair, and wash their bodies. Certainly a challenging type of thing to grow up in. And in Superman and Me, Alexi makes the point quite clear that you know, the fact that they were poor, his family was growing up, but because one of his parents, quote, usually managed to find some minimum wage job or another, that made us middle class by reservation standards. Of course, one parent working a minimum wage job is certainly not um, middle class by American definitions generally, but apparently that is middle class by reservation standards. Uh, Alexei also suffered from alcoholism until he decided to become sober at the age of 23, you know, it's a striking statistic to think that one in 10 Native American deaths are linked to alcohol, at least according to the Associated Press. Uh, they may not, those with Native American heritage, they may not have uh, sort of resistance to the 
um, to consuming alcohol, as many Europeans do, for example. So when alcohol was brought here, it was quite a threat to uh, the Native American people, and that could explain in part why there are so many uh, alcoholics uh, suffering in the Native American community. They just don't have the genetic predisposition to uh, have that uh, to deal with the very powerful substance that is alcohol. You know, it's legal, of course, for 21-year-olds, but it is a very powerful substance. Uh, in some cases, more powerful, you can argue, than certain illegal substances. Uh, it destroys lives, uh, but yet it can also be uh, rather fun, too, if you're educated, consume it wisely, are of age, and so forth. So, Alexei has his passion for comedy. Uh, he really tries to bring humor in his characters, and hopefully you can see that in what you pawn out of a redeem. Uh, his fame has sort of led him to being, in some ways, a spokesperson for Native American culture, which has both benefits and drawbacks from Alexei's perspective and from Native Americans generally. We have to remember that there are a bunch of tribes that compose uh, the Native American group in our country, and some of these tribes have uh, differing ideas and philosophies about how to live, uh, but you could certainly say that they all uh, want to improve their living conditions, as, as most of us do. He really wants to reach a large audience, and that in part explains why he uh, entered the film industry with Smoke Signals, the screenplay he wrote in 99. Uh, he has to honor his writing, he insists, by living the principles he glorifies. So we should expect him to be a kind and decent human being in life. Uh, and I can't speak to that, but it certainly seems like he probably is living up to his standards. What You Pawn I Redeem is very much a story about a regalia. This is an example of a regalia. Uh, it is a type of Native American attire, sacred, uh, spiritual attire, usually worn in uh, events like uh, powwow dancing and important sacred days. The story we'll look at again is called What You Pawn I Will Redeem. This is an interesting image I culled from the internet. I'm contemplating what we're seeing here, the $5 bill, the alcohol, whiskey, very cheap whiskey that is there, and the, the hand of our protagonist, Jackson Jackson, is worthwhile for a moment or two. You can see that it's dirty. You can see his clothes are ragged. That gives you some indication about his social status, where he comes from, uh, this character, Jackson Jackson. Two interesting quotations from the beginning of the short story. Uh, piece by piece, I disappeared. I've been disappearing ever since, he says. Do any of us know exactly who we are, he contemplates in this short story. He will venture to a pawn shop uh, at one point in time, and we'll see the uh, conflict and the narrative unfold here. The Native Americans apparently often sewed at least one flaw into their regalia so that they would know it was theirs. And Jackson Jackson's family had one yellow bead that they sewed into their uh, regalia, their, her, his grandmother's regalia specifically. And so when he goes to the pawn shop and sees that regalia, he can identify it is in fact his grandmother's regalia due to that yellow bead. Another example of a regalia. So getting back to uh, discussing a little bit about uh, Sherman Alexie, if I could, for a moment. Uh, I think referring back to the initial essay, Superman and Me, is of value. Uh, they were poor by most standards, as I suggested. They lived, quote, on a combination of irregular paychecks, hope, fear, and government surplus food. Their home was filled with books growing up, as Alexie's father loved books. And as a result... Alexei developed an aching devotion and decided to love books as well. He still remembers the exact moment when he discovered the, with sudden clarity, the purpose of a paragraph. The purpose of a paragraph for Alexei was thinking of it as a fence that held words. The words inside a paragraph worked together for a common purpose. They had some specific reason for being inside the same fence. It's an interesting uh, metaphor to 
describe exactly the, the utility, the function of a paragraph. Inside our house, each family member existed as a separate paragraph, but still had genetics and common experience to link them. Again, that's another meta use of metaphor there by Alexei. Each panel, complete with picture, dialogue, and narrative, is a three-dimensional paragraph. When Alexei thinks about a Superman comic book, which was one of the ways he loved to read. He used to pretend to read, saying, I'm breaking down the door, when he would see Superman kick down a door, and in this way he learned to read. Look at how far he's come. Look at how far you can come, too, uh, if you are struggling through a challenge right now. If only you apply yourself, make the right connections, work hard, uh, network with others, and continually strive to get better every day, as Alexei seems to have done. You know, reading The Grapes of Wrath in kindergarten uh, is extraordinary. Certainly dubs him as a prodigy, but that's not how he thinks of himself. Quote, he grows into a man who often speaks of his childhood in the third person, as if it will somehow dull the pain and make him sound more modest about his talents. That's interesting to ponder, ponder why Alexei would speak of his childhood in the third person, why he feels the need to dull pain to sound more modest about his talents. What kind of pain did Alexei experience? What kind of pain is associated with being a Native American in the United States in 2016 uh, and before? Thinking of the Cleveland Indians preparing perhaps to win the World Series. Thinking of the Washington Redskins, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, and the uh, logos that these teams often display. And you'd be hard-pressed to think of a comparable example for another minority group where they would have some sort of caricature of an individual as an emblem for a team. Uh, you certainly wouldn't see, a, for example, a, a Jewish caricature, uh, as that, of course, would, have, would be appalling to society due to the genocide perpetrated against the Jewish people during the Second World War. And yet again, you could certainly argue that uh, you know, giving Native Americans smallpox-infused blankets, as supposedly happened in the early days of colonial America, was itself an attempt to perpetrate you know, genocide on these people. The Trail of Tears, of course, uh, another example of sort of pushing these people away from their native tribal lands where they lived for thousands of years and into foreign reservations without adequate resources, supplies, and resources. So uh, Lexi goes on in his essay to say that a smart Indian is a dangerous person. Why do you think a smart Indian is a dangerous person? Someone to be feared, someone to be ridiculed by Indians and non-Indians alike. This is a curious idea. We're expected to be stupid. Alexei says of Indian children, and most of us live up to those expectations inside the classroom, but subvert them on the outside. Uh, he describes his colleagues in elementary and middle and high school as monosyllabic in front of their non-Indian teachers, but capable of telling complicated stories and jokes at the dinner table. Again, why? Why are they answering in one-word sentences in class and yet coming home and telling uh, lovely narratives with their family. What's the difference between the non-Indian teachers, the education system imposed on the native peoples, uh, and their home life, their dinner table environment? We fail continuously, he says, to uh, in the non-Indian world. Uh, they just have a different culture, it seems. Um, they're pitied by Indians and non-Indies alike, and often not accepted. But notice how Alexei says he refuses to fail and he perseveres, while also admitting that he was very lucky, too. Uh, typically, from my studies, successful people, yes, they work very hard. Uh, they do have talent and skill. They do network. They are likable. They are memorable. But they're also lucky. And uh, I don't know exactly what luck is, but I can, uh, I'm pretty convinced that luck is certainly a, an important component of achieving. Uh, he read all the books he could. He read books at resource. Every chance he got, he read books. And again, I think that's one of the only ways to become a writer. If you're interested, as far as a professional writer, you have to read voraciously. It's simply not enough to read every now and then. Alexi says, I read with equal parts joy and desperation. I loved these books, but I also knew that love had only one purpose. I was trying to save my life. Dramatic, but uh, you know, maybe we are too. Readers are leaders, as they say. And in uh, most professions, you need to be capable of reading something and responding quickly. The, you know, the whole cliche, the more you read, the more you know. I can't emphasize enough 
how important reading is to your development, reading the things that you want to read to make you a better human being, not just fiction, but a variety of different uh, readings. Nonfiction, too, has its place. Writing is something that's beyond Indians, according to Alexi. He can't recall a single time when a guest visitor, a guest teacher visited the reservation. This accounts for why Alexi visits schools as often as possible. Notice why he does this. To serve others in a way he wasn't served. To save young Native American students, perhaps. To show them what's possible. To be an example of a human being who has risen up through the challenges of reservation culture. To shine as one of the beacons of American literary power, fame, uh, prestige, intelligence, uh, and skill. Books, he says to them, books. He's trying to save their lives with them, and it really is that serious in many ways. So if you find yourself in a difficult situation, Alexi should absolutely be a beacon of hope for you, uh, and following a path comparable to his couldn't be a bad idea. As you read Superman and Me, notice the use of repetition to cement some key ideas. It really ties it together with a running theme that I think is worth your time investigating. So turning from Superman and Me to What You Paul and I Were Redeemed, the story that we'll focus on, I want you to contemplate a little bit, why don't you finish the things you start? Have you ever started something and not finished it? If so, why? Think for a moment about that. Think for a moment about what you know about American Indians. Don't use the internet. Just think of what you know. Are you familiar with what's happening in North Dakota right now? It's been in the news a little bit. But if you're not aware of what's happening there, then you're certainly not... uh, up to date on some issues currently facing uh, the tribes there. And that's okay, of course. But it's important to realize uh, where our ignorance lies. You're welcome at this point to stop the uh, lecture and, and pause to write every now and then if you feel it relevant or pause the lecture. The second question, is wit, humor, and irony a way to deflect self-examination? Wit, humor, and irony, is it a way to deflect self-examination? You know, humor can be serious sometimes. Even though it seems silly, there could be a serious point hidden underneath. You know, if people are laughing, they're listening. And if they're listening and laughing, you can talk about difficult subjects. It's an anesthetic, uh, Alexi says. So he uses humor to help broach and discuss challenging things that without humor might seem too serious or too challenging to approach. Third question to contemplate. What kinds of acts of kindness have you witnessed or participated in this month? What kinds of acts of kindness have you witnessed in or participated in this month? Maybe pause the lecture and write a few down. See what comes to your mind. Maybe plan an act of kindness to participate in later this day. We'll see the relevance of this in the story later on. Think of the title. What you pawn, I will redeem. What you pawn, I will redeem. Interpret that. What are the implications of redeem? Of you? Who is the you? As we read, see if you can figure that out. I'm not sure there's a clear answer, uh, or one correct answer, but certainly worth our time. The title of a work is typically fairly important. At one point, uh, the characters, uh, the Aleuts, the characters in the uh, story we'll talk about, Kalija, <clears throat> which is a song about Hank, by Hank Williams, a white country singer. Kalija is a wooden Indian statue that falls in love with another wooden in- Indian statue across the road, but obviously since they're wooden Indian statues, they cannot express their emotions, just standing, quote, lonely as can be, uh, especially when the uh, female Native American statue is sold and, and moves away. The Indian becomes even more lonely. Why is this song referenced? What role does loneliness play in the story? How uh, are some characters perhaps wooden in what you pull and redeem, like Kalijah? Thinking back to when I discussed the regalia, why they sewed a flaw into the regalia. Why did they sew a flaw in? What's the relevance of having a flaw in this beautiful attire? All right. Uh, At this point... uh, you can go ahead and, and do a little writing about some of these questions for a minute, and then we'll begin What You Pawn I Will Redeem by Sherman Alexi in class. 
I would also take a look at some of the assessment options for this story as soon as possible. You don't obviously don't get started on them now, but it's nice to know some of the things that are available to you before we begin the short story so that you can begin to think and brainstorm as we read together. As always, see me with questions.